hello everyone so i welcome you all to lecture number 4 so today we will be starting with a topic which is called as flow index so flow index it is generally uh, termed uh, as if and the definition is that it indicates it indicates the rate of loss in sharing strength rate of loss in sharing strength upon increase in water content and the formula of if is equal to w1 minus w2 divided by log of n2 by n1 okay so uh, this is the formula for flow index now you might wonder what is this w1 w2 n1 and n2 so you might be thinking what are these terms so these are uh, the terms which we get from the liquid limit test if you remember the liquid limit test so <clears throat> we uh, we give a number of blows isn't it uh, for the soils to mix together uh, and we count the number of blows in which the soils get mixed so if you look from the top view in the liquid limit apparatus so uh, in this case grande apparatus from the top the soil we we cut it from the middle isn't it so where uh, there is a like a gap isn't it we cut it from the middle and there is a gap and we give an uh, we try to give a number of blows so that number of blows is the n isn't it so suppose uh, um, at one time the moisture content is w1 in the soil sample then we saw that suppose n at n1 number of blows the soil gets mixed up okay we we made the cut okay we made the cut in the apparatus in the soil sample and uh, at w1 moisture content of the soil sample we saw that at n1 blows the soils got mixed up so then we do another trial with a soil of another moisture content which is w2 and we saw that uh, the soils uh, after cutting the soil sample uh, uh, we saw that the soils get mixed up it, uh, in n2 number of blows so we get w1 n1 and w2 n2 so those we put in the formula um, this formula and we get the flow index so this is the basic uh, idea from where you can calculate the flow index and the main uh, significance of flow index is that it indicates the loss of shearing strength upon increase in moisture content so this suppose this is a soil sample 
so when uh, you give a shear force like this one the soil sample will get deformed right it will get deformed when you give a shear, shear force so uh, the more the moisture content increases the more you increase the water the more it will get deformed isn't it the more it will get deformed that means it will have less shear strength isn't it if we add more water the shear strength will decrease and the soil will deform more so how in what speed does the shear strength decreases upon adding water on the soil it is indicated by flow index so that is all you need to know about flow index so let us now go to the second topic which is called as toughness index and it is uh, denoted by IT the formula of toughness index IT is equal to plasticity index divided by flow index and uh, this uh, toughness index it gives us an idea it gives us an idea of the shear strength of soil at plastic limit Okay, so uh, this is the significance. Uh, as I have given you one diagram at the very like initial stages, like this one is the shrinkage limit, this one is the plastic limit, this one is the liquid limit. So at this point, whatever is the shear strength, at this point, whatever may be the shear strength, this toughness index gives us an idea about it okay and different soils have different shear strengths at plastic limit different soils have different shear strength at plastic limit so if it is greater for a certain soil that means this soil will have a greater shear strength at plastic limit or if it is less for a soil that means for that soil, the shear strength is low at plastic limit. So this gives us an idea, an idea. Now, if we look into the ranges, IT, this IT, this ranges is generally varying from 0 to 3 for most soil. And if sometimes it is less than one, then we can say that the soil is easily crushed at plastic limit. That we can easily crush the soil at plastic limit.
so that is the basic idea i hope you have understood of uh, about the toughness index then we go to our next topic which is called as <coughs> shrinkage ratio shrinkage ratio so if i write down the definition you can write it as ratio of a given volume change in a soil <coughs> ratio of a given volume change in a soil expressed as a percentage of the dry volume to the corresponding change in moisture content above the shrinkage limit. So, if I try to formulate it, the formula will look like this. Shrinkage ratio is the ratio of the volume change. Suppose, for, uh, for example, let me take that at moisture content W1, the volume of the soil is P1. At moisture content W2, the volume of the soil is V2. And Vd is the dry volume of soil okay when the soil is dry so three conditions dry volume then volume at moisture content w1 and volume at moisture content w2 so <coughs> it is the ratio of the change in volume as a percentage of dry volume so change in volume v1 minus v2 expressed as a percentage of dry volume that means this one to the corresponding change in water content. Why uh, it is said that uh, corresponding change in water content above shrinkage limit? Because below shrinkage limit, volume change does not occur. Isn't it? I repeat it again. So this is the shrinkage limit, isn't it? Below this, the volume change does not occur. So that's why since we are dealing with volume changes, so we need to use moisture contents W1, W2, which are above the shrinkage limit. So W1 and W2 should be higher than shrinkage limit. Then only volume change will happen. So shrinkage ratio is the change in volume expressed as a percentage of dry volume to the corresponding change in moisture content above the shrinkage limit so this is the main concept of shrinkage ratio then we go to a topic called as sensitivity
So sensitivity is uh, generally defined as the ratio of the unconfined compressive strength of an undisturbed specimen of the soil to the co unconfined compressive strength of a specimen of the same soil after remolding at unaltered water content. Now, for this, you need to learn about unconfined compressive strength. Then um, you need to uh, know the test, how to find out the unconfined compressive strength. So this will be dealt a little later. Okay, so for the time being, uh, you just keep in mind that uh, unconfined compressive strength means the strength that we collect from a sample of soil which is made in the form of a cylindrical specimen okay so suppose cylindrical soil specimen we are taking then we apply a force above above it we apply a we apply a force so um, in this way the test is done the cylindrical soil specimen is used then we apply a force on it gradually and we find out one value which is called as unconfined compressive strength so uh, that is generally termed as qu we will go into details uh, about this test uh, later uh, down the syllabus so confined compressive strength so first we we do the test we apply a load okay in the, in the machine there is a specific machine for this qu unconfined compressive strength for finding out qu there is a specific machine now uh, Two times we will be doing the test. One is uh, when the soil is undisturbed. Okay. And second is when the soil is remolded. That means the soil is disturbed. Okay. So two situations are there. Uh, first, the soil will be tested when the soil is, soil sample is undisturbed. The soil sample taken from the site is undisturbed. Okay, then we find out QU. Then again, uh, we uh, remold the soil. That means we 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 disturb the soil. Okay, then the soil becomes disturbed, and then uh, we find out uh, we find out QU once again. So, first one is QU undisturbed. When the soil is taken from the site, we don't disturb the soil. So, QU, with that sample, you do the test, you get QU undisturbed from the sample. And then what we do is, next time, the soil which is taken from the site, is totally remolded that means it is mixed and it is uh, like it is uh, reshaped and it is ultimately given disturbance and then this soil sample when it is tested we get QU disturbed so when we do the ratio we get the Sensitivity. Fitty. Okay, so we'll go. We'll definitely go into the unconfined compressive strength, but now is not the time. Uh, we'll go uh, go to this topic a little later. Now, what is another another topic is called as thixotropy. Thixo Tropy. Now um, you you take from suppose this is a site. 
this is the site and from here you take a certain sample of soil to your lab okay so in the process you suppose you have given you have like tempered with the soil you have given it disturbance isn't it you have given it you are making it into different shapes suppose okay uh, you are shaping it you are giving different shapes you are giving some disturbance and ultimately when it gets disturbed its strength is changed okay so when it gets disturbed its strength changes now the strength it had uh, when it was in the it might not have the same strength when it is taken to the lab okay so the strength that it had here at site when it was getting transported since it is getting some disturbance the strength here in the lab will not be same okay so suppose originally is s naught and now it is uh, taken from the side to the lab and it is getting some disturbance and it is shaped into various shapes so ultimately particles are getting disturbed so now the final strength is suppose sf now uh, since this sf and s naught are two strengths we get when we suppose after doing the whole the tests we keep it alone we leave it alone okay this sample we leave it alone we are leaving it alone we don't do anything okay now what happens is that sf the strength that it has sf it tries to get back this strength once again s not it tries to get back its strength as not when we leave it undisturbed okay we just leave it alone after doing the work we just leave it alone and then it tries to regain its original strength which it had in the site and that property is called as thixotropy okay so I'm just repeating it just once again Not that difficult, not that difficult, but still, uh, if at all there are some students who have not understood it, I'm just trying to uh, say it once again. Suppose this is the site, and you are taking a sample of soil from here. Original strength is suppose S0, and suppose it is now this is your lab. So you are taking it to your lab. And you are uh, using it for various things okay and you are disturbing it the particles are getting disturbed you are giving it different shapes so when the particles are getting disturbed and you are using it then um, its strength becomes SF then after your work is done you leave the soil alone okay after your work is done you leave the soil alone and you don't do anything with the soil you leave it alone then when it is left alone it tries to regain the strength as not that it had in the site so that property is called as thixotropy so now I guess you have understood it in a much better way next we go to a topic which is called as relative density and it is also like a very common topic which uh, general, generally comes in competitive examinations it is called as relative density dr there are two formulas let me write down the two formulas so first one is maximum void ratio Emax minus 
void ratio in natural state of the soil okay then divided by maximum void ratio minus minimum void ratio so maximum void ratio when do we get when the soil is in the loosest state that means uh, suppose void ratio maximum will be happening when there are more voids maximum void ratio means what more voids so suppose voids are more solids are less so the soil is loose in the loosest state so this is emax in the void ratio we get uh, in the voids only we get air plus water isn't it air plus water then minimum void ratio means minimum voids so suppose soil is here voids are just here where we get air plus water so this is when the uh, this is called as minimum void ratio and this is when the soil is in the densest state and e natural means in natural condition when you whatever whatever the soil condition the soil is in okay in the natural condition um, whatever void ratio you get at site that is called as the void ratio in natural state okay so if we get these values void ratio in the loosest state void ratio in the densest state void ratio in the normal natural condition then we get the relative density then another formula So dry maximum dry density by normal dry density in the natural condition divided into normal dry density in the natural condition minus minimum dry density divided by maximum dry density minus minimum dry density. So if you get all these uh, values then you can find out the relative density so you just have to remember what is this maximum dry density at maximum compaction you get maximum when you compact the soil to the highest level you get maximum dry density when you compact it to the highest level and when the soil is very loose not compacted properly then the dry density is minimum okay and the natural is when you take the soil from the site whatever uh, density you get in the natural condition of the soil that is called the normal dry density so if you get these terms then uh, you ultimately can find out the relative density so that is uh, all i uh, need to say and uh, it is um, generally this dr it actually uh, represents the denseness or looseness of the soil deposit okay so you can write one line so relative density So for relative density you can write degree of denseness 
or looseness of natural deposits of soil can be measured in terms of their relative density so uh, now let me give you some ranges for relative density and then it is expressed in percentage so you can write down this table relative density and classification so obviously it is expressed in percentage so if it is less than 15 percent then very loose 15 to 35 it is loose if it is 35 to 65 it is medium if it is 65 85 it is dense and if it is greater than 85 it is very dense so please try to remember it okay please try to remember this range for the uh, relative density and how to classify the soil based on their relative density so thank you very much